Hi, my name is Reed, and today I'll be presenting on the emerging intersectional field of trauma and psychosis. Although research in the intersectional field of trauma and psychosis are relatively recent, the link has existed for decades. In the United States alone, approximately 100,000 people are diagnosed with psychosis every year. Of these, approximately 70% are report histories of trauma. Because of this prevalence, scientists have identified early histories of trauma as a risk factor for the later development of psychosis and have begun deeper investigations of this relationship. Today we'll be looking at one of these investigations by first taking a look at the background of the relationship between trauma and psychosis and understanding the underlying question that researchers have asked. We will then take a look at their results, their conclusions, their limitations, and what their study holds for future developments in this field. Um, sorry, I like memorized it, so I'm like, trying to go. Um, as Atha mentioned, there are very high rates of trauma in individuals with psychosis, with 49 to 100 percent of patients with psychosis reporting early histories of trauma, and 75 to 98 percent of those individuals reporting multiple traumas. Psychologists and neuroscientists have developed several cognitive and neurophysiological models to explain this link. From the cognitive perspective, the experience of trauma leads to the formation of negative schemas or beliefs that one is vulnerable to threats or that the world is a dangerous place. These beliefs lead to the formation of paranoid ideation, which is a hallmark of psychosis. Paranoid ideation in the form of delusional voices can also, be, can also happen as a result of great social trauma and adversity. Trauma can also be experienced as persistent and powerful exposure to stress or stress symptoms. Increased stress leads to the increased production of glucocorticoids, or stress hormones, as well as permanent changes to the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, a complex neuroendocrine system responsible for the stress response. Let's take a closer look at how trauma can affect the HP axis. The HP axis functions as a set of three organs connected and regulated by the production and release of various stress hormones. When an individual experiences trauma or inordinate amounts of stress, three changes take place. The hypothalamus becomes less sensitive to stressors, the negative feedback mechanism falters, and the stress hormone regulation of the dopaminergic system fails. It is this third occurrence that leads to psychosis, as dysregulated, dysregulated dopamine leads to misattribution, hallucinations, delusions, and other psychotic symptoms. So there's a relationship between psychosis and trauma. But what does this mean for those 70,000 individuals who are afflicted with both? This is a question that Nadine Keene and colleagues asked in their 2017 study, Integrated Trauma-Focused Cognitive Behavioral Therapy for Post-Traumatic Stress and Psychotic Symptoms. So the question that they asked is, because psychosis patients are now exposed to cognitive behavior therapy as their main form of treatment, what is the acceptability, feasibility, and preliminary effectiveness of combining cognitive behavioral therapy for post-traumatic stress and psychotic symptoms into one single protocol. Or in other words, for patients who have psychosis and histories of trauma, is it more effective to combine CBT techniques for PTSD and psychosis? Before we delve into the methodology of the study, we'll first need to review a few concept, concepts, the first being CBT. Cognitive behavioral therapy is a form of psychotherapy that fixes distorted cognitions and dangerous behaviors through a series of steps, including exposure. The, study, the, the researchers of this study used a form of CBT in their investigation. This, this study had nine participants, five male and four females. The average age was 37 years old. 78% of the study participants were people of color and 89% of them were unemployed. And though they varied in their psychosis and trauma diagnoses, all individuals had clinically diagnosed psychosis and trauma. This study took place over the course of three years, with assessments taken at several time points, at month zero, month eight, month 22, and month 31. The main part of this, of this study was to create an integrated psychosis and trauma CBT protocol, which consisted of five phases. The first phase was assessment and goal setting, the second phase was the development of coping strategies. The third phase was linking past trauma to current PTSD and psychosis symptoms. The fourth phase was the integrated CBT protocol. And the fifth phase, fifth phase was relapse prevention. So now let's take a look at the results from their study. 
in order to measure the success and effectiveness of their, of their integrated CBT protocol, the researchers gave the participants several measures that look at the, both the positive and negative symptoms of both PTSD and psychosis. This included the post-traumatic stress scale, the uh, psychotic symptoms rating scale, the Beck depression and anxiety inventory, the, the satisfaction with therapy questionnaire, and the core 10. So first, let's take a look at the results of PTSD and well-being. There is a significant downward trajectory from baseline with only a slight increase at follow-up. For psychotic symptoms, there's also a similar downward trajectory from baseline with only a slight increase at follow-up after therapy had ended. For depression, there's also a negative decrease, uh, there's also a downward trajectory with a very, very slight increase at follow-up. The spike for the DASS is a result of a limitation of the study in which they switched the, switched the measurement halfway through the study. For anxiety, there is an, also a downward trajectory from baseline with almost no increase at follow-up. So what do these results mean for the what do these results mean in the greater context of psychosis and trauma? Well, for the question of whether integrating CBT protocols for PTSD and, uh, and psychosis for patients with histories of trauma is more effective? The short answer is yes. Um, visual examination of group means from the study show that overall participants had a significant decrease in all of their positive symptoms as well as their negative symptoms for PTSD and psychosis, even after follow-up. Um, this study has important implications. I actually don't know the last two slides. Um, should I just go ahead? Yes. This study has important implications for its psychological treatment and PTSD, and it suggests that an integrated approach can have a positive impact on the positive symptoms of PTSD and psychosis, as well as the negative symptoms of depression and anxiety. But like any scientific inquiry, this study had its limitations. One of its limitations was its sample size. So with only nine participants, this can be this study may not be able to be applied to the general population. However, because it was a long case-based study, this sample size is pretty uh, common amongst these kinds of studies. The other problem of the study was that it, their therapists were extremely qualified of the, they were extremely knowledgeable of this integrated approach, and most therapists are not trained in these kinds of integrated approaches, so applying this to another therapist may not exactly work. Uh, the third limitation that I mentioned earlier was they switched their depression inventory halfway through the study, so that uh, so that that means that the depression results may not be as significant as previously understood. And even though all of the participants had shown a decrease in all of their symptoms of PTSD and psychosis at the end of three years, the symptoms still remained in the moderate to severe range of depression and anxiety and psychosis. So what does this study hold for future developments? It would be important to re replicate the study with not only a diverse and larger sample size, but also a variety of trained psycho variety of trained therapists to see if this integrated approach can be applicable to a broader audience. And secondly, it would be important to see if we can manipulate the integrated approach protocol to see if we can increase its effectiveness even further. And uh, I think, yeah, uh, yeah, that's it. Good job.